Hey guys, in this effect house tutorial, I want to show you how you can create a prediction filter like this. I have created a subgraph for you, which makes it very simple to create a filter like this. And I will show you in this video how you can use this subgraph. And I have also created a Figma template for you, which makes it very simple to create the graphics for the filter. So let's start. Hey again, so let's create this prediction effect here in Effect House. Before we start creating the effect, please make sure that you have downloaded all the assets. We need to create this effect. We need the subgraph, which I have already programmed for you, which makes it very simple to create a filter like this. And you will need some graphics to customize this effect. This will be the back before the cards turn and also all the options as graphics which will be randomly generated which show up after the card has turned. I have created a Figma template for you which you can use to create those graphics. So yeah, you can find this prediction effect template in the description. So just take a look and you can customize all those things here. But of course, you can also create your own graphics with Photoshop, Illustrator, Canva or any other app. Um, yeah, I have also included some graphics in the download link. So if you just want to follow along this tutorial, you can just um, use those. So just go to the description now and click on the download link. Then you will end up here on this Dropbox page and here you can download all the assets. After you have downloaded all the assets, we can start creating the filter. So the first thing will be that we will import all our assets. So we go to our folder and here you can find the graphics and this prediction subgraph. Um, yeah, just drag and drop the subgraph first in your assets panel. Now you can already take a look on the subgraph. So you can just drag and drop this into the visual scripting panel. And this is this pre-made um, yeah, subgraph I have already programmed for you, which makes it very simple to create this effect. The next thing will be that we will import our graphics. We will import four of them by a drag and drop and the others as a um, texture sequence. The graphics we will import with drag and drop will be back one, back two, back three and the headline. So just select those graphics and also drag and drop it into the assets panel. And there are also the options, which are all the yeah, options in the filter, which will be generated randomly. Um, here are 60 of them, but of course you can do more or less. So yeah, let's also import them too. So go to the assets panel and click on the little plus. Here we go to import and then do texture sequence. Because we have free random generator, I will split those 60 graphics into packs of 20. So there will be um, no duplicates um, in the randomization. So select texture sequence. And here I select the first 20 graphics. But of course, when you do have less um, options, you can just do 10 or even more. So then I click on open. And then I will rename my animation textures, which I have just imported so I don't get confused later. So this will be um, option one. Then I do the same again, add asset, import texture sequence. Now I start from 21 to 40. Also just rename this option two and here in underneath you have the textures you have also here the frame this will be option one and this is option two and now we do this a third time import texture sequence and now I will select from 41 to 60 so also rename them again Yeah, this will be option two and this will be option three and also here. So now after we have imported all our graphics, we can start yeah, creating our scene so we see something here on the screen. The first thing I will do is to create 
the title or the headline. So I go to add object and in this example, in this tutorial, we will um, work with 3D objects so that we can do this turnaround effect. So the so here we have image. So I will create an image for the headline. I also rename this to headline. Then I go to the right hand side and here for the texture, I set the headline as a texture. And now we already have this daily prediction. Now on the right hand side, we can set the scale for this and also the Y position. So I will set it a little bit more up. So yeah. Just play around with it until you find the right size and position on the screen. So now we will create our free prediction elements. For this, we will use a 3D scene object. So go to the add object and here we already have the empty object, which we will use for this. So this will be also our option one. And then here I will also create 2 3D images. Now make sure that this image is inside of the option container. So when you drag and drop it into it, you have this little arrow so you can open and close this. So this is like a folder. So this will be the back and then we can just duplicate this. And this will be our front. So just make sure that the back is the first here and the front is the second because this is very important for our yeah prediction subgraph otherwise you will have it yeah the other way around so now we can start already programming our first prediction so here we have a lot of inputs here at the prediction this is the start trigger um, so for example when you tap on the screen this gets triggered here our scene object and this scene object will be our option container. Then we have to set the pack texture. This will be our back one. And also we have to set our texture sequence. This will be option one. And now you can already see that when we set the back texture that this already has changed. And now the turn duration, this is how long it takes that it turns around. And for this, I will set this duration to one second. Now we can um, add a new node. So just right click here or here. You can also click on this plus, add node. And here I search for screen tab. And now connect the screen tab next output with the start input of this prediction subgraph. And now when we tap on the screen, we can already see that this turns around so we can restart the filter and we do it when we do it again we see there is a other option showing up so now we do this three times but we can of course just duplicate this option scene object here i will also rename it to option one or we can also call it prediction one and then just right click and duplicate it so now you can rename this of course to option two. Now the only problem is that this is overlaying the first one. So it's, so let's just reposition those elements that they are already on the right position. So I will change the position, the Y position to let's say 12, a little bit too high up, maybe 10 or eight. Yes, this looks good. And the X position for option one will be minus 10, a little bit too much, maybe minus five. And I will also change the scale because at the moment it is a little bit too big to 0 0.8 or 0 0.7. So because we need three here, but of course you can also do two or four or five, just um, to the steps. I will show you now how um, as often as you have your predictions here. So the next step is that we also duplicate the prediction subgraph or just drag and drop a new one in. And now we will set up the scene object to option two, of course. And for the pack texture, we will use back two. Now they look all the same, but maybe you have 
um, different bags, maybe one, two, or complete different graphics. So um, that's why I imported it three times the same. And then for the texture sequence, we will um, take option two. Now we will just reposition it. Scale was 0 0.7. So this will be also 0 0.7. Um, y we had at eight. And now the last step is to set the turn duration to one again, or if you want to turn it faster, maybe to 0 0.5. And here we have an end output at the first prediction subgraph. This will be um, yeah, connected to the start input of the second prediction. Now when we tap on the screen again, this turns and then the second one turns. So, and now we just have to do this a third time. So I duplicate this. Then I just rename this to option three. Then I will set the position here to x8, so it is on the right side. And then I will just duplicate the prediction subgraph, set the scene object to option 3, back to back 3, and also the texture sequence to option 3. And now connect also the end of the second subgraph to the start input of the last prediction. And now when we tap on the screen, they are <clears throat> turning around. And yeah, that's all the magic behind a prediction filter here in Effect House. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new on this channel, it would be nice when you subscribe to it. So thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial. Bye.